Bryson. I'm the founder and the director of the DFW Center for Play Therapy Training. I want to demonstrate today a portable play therapy kit. I get a lot of inquiries from people who are needing to be a portable play therapist, doing in-home therapy or going into schools or other settings where they have to be portable. And they're wondering, what can I put in a kit? What do I need to put in a kit? And how do I make it easy to tote around? So this little kit I'm going to demonstrate for you today I assembled based on needing to use it with preschoolers, but it could certainly be used with children probably up to the ages of eight, maybe even a little bit older. So bear in mind, a lot of things that are in here are geared toward um, children, you know, like uh, three to five years of age. Anyway, I bought this little duffel bag. I think I found it like at Walmart. It was about eight or ten dollars, so that was very affordable. It does have a, a pocket on this side, a little zipper pocket out here, if you needed to put some smaller items inside. Anyway, one of the first things that I need if I'm a portable play therapist and I'm going into someone's home or another setting is I may need to put something down to define the play space. And this is a circular vinyl tablecloth. I'm not going to unfold the whole thing. And you could lay this down on the floor, arrange the toys either around the edges of the tablecloth or in the middle, and that sets up the boundaries for this is our play space. Very important with, with that children know that there is a boundary for your play space. So I select toys for my kit based on the three categories that Gary Landreth identifies that we need to use when we facilitate child-centered play therapy. And those are real-life toys, those are creative expressive toys and they're aggressive release toys. So when we have those three categories in mind, we want to have toys representing each of those categories so that we have a very diverse kit and that children with different presenting problems will have the toys that they need to play out life experiences um, and find solutions to problems. So it's important to not just randomly grab toys and put them into a portable kit. You need to have a rationale behind them and be able to share if someone asks you why do you have this toy, how a child could use this toy in a therapeutic way. So real life things would be a couple of baby dolls. We want to have baby dolls that have different colored skin tones that represent the diversity of the child clients that we see. So real life toys, baby dolls, maybe a little baby blanket that goes with that. In addition to that, how about a baby bottle? Um, this is a real one and it does have real nipples on it, so you're going to want to carry extra ones because sometimes preschoolers will put these in their mouth. So for sanitary reasons, you're going to want to replace those. I also have a zipper bag. This is it clear? Um, zipper bags are great because then you can see what's in them. And I have some, a little doll family that I found at a uh, thrift store. Those are great places to find toys. You can often find um, them very affordably that way. So it's got some furniture and little people, little baby bed, kind of get the idea of the different things that are in there for that purpose. I also have, for a real life toy, a little toy um, doctor kit. This is an old Fisher Price doctor kit. And um, most of what's in here came with that doctor kit, that little faux blood pressure cuff that they have, a stethoscope. As most children say, that's a really big shot thingy. And then I've added an empty uh, pill bottle, some real band-aids, and some real cotton balls. So it has some uh, things in there that they can use. And you'll have to carry extra band-aids and cotton balls and replace those with each child client that you use. I also have a set of little toy dishes. So that's also real life. I try to stay away from forks because sometimes a fork could be used as a weapon. So we just have little bitty spoons here. So there's a little toy dish set. I have some puppets. We have two, one that's kind of aggressive. So that's an aggressive toy. And this little bumblebee, um, even though a bee might be kind of seen as an aggressive thing because it can sting, he's smiling. What I these are bath mats and I found them at a dollar store. Preschool children have a hard time manipulating regular puppets because you always have to get your fingers in all the different, you know, the arms and the legs. With these, they simply have to slide their hands in. We want children to be able to manipulate the toys, so we want to make sure that the toys don't frustrate them. And a bonus, since these are bath mitts, 
you can wash them. Sometimes children have grimy little hands when we do play therapy with them, so we can easily wash these. We need some art supplies, and I like to use School boxes you, um, for school supply. School supplies are put in. They work great for these portable plants. Sometimes you can find these clear ones, which are great because they're kind of like the clear storage bags. You can easily see what's inside. So a safety scissors, some tape, a glue stick, washable markers for the preschoolers. I like these fat markers, easier for them to hold on to. Some craft sticks and um, some pipe cleaners, chenille stems. They, they're they usually twice this length, but I cut them in half when I purchase them because then they go farther and they fit in this box better. So there's some creative expressive toys. In addition to that, you're gonna want some things that they can um, easily, what if they wanna destroy something, paper towel tubes, uh, egg carton, the same way they can create things with them, they could even destroy them. If you have an angry child who needs to release some aggression, it's okay to rip this up or, or stomp on an egg carton. So have your friends save all of their recyclable items for you. Also would need some uh, paper, construction paper, lots of different colors if you can find some that has different colored skin tones that might be very beneficial. Sometimes even markers come in um, a multicultural pack with different kind of skin tone colored um, markers. And then this is just some white paper. And oftentimes you can find these kinds of pads of paper at the dollar store, very affordable. Some Play-Doh is always good to have. Um, I like to make my own Play-Doh. I have a recipe that I've used for a number of years. You could buy store-bought Play-Doh. Um, the homemade stuff stores really well and keeps for a pretty long time in a, a clear zipper bag as well. I like to have just one color of Play-Doh because if you have more than one, children are gonna just mix them up and you're gonna end up with kind of a gray, yucky color and then the next child doesn't wanna play with that. So one color eliminates that yuckiness. A little soft ball and this is actually a splash bomb ball that would, you would use in the swimming pool. Oftentimes you can find these at the dollar store. Sometimes there are two or three even in a package for a dollar. So that could, that's a real life toy, but it could also be an aggressive release toy. Here's another aggressive release toy. It's a foam dart gun. Um, I think guns are important because um, children know guns exist. Um, I don't think I've ever met a child who said, what is this, that they didn't know. They see them either um, in on TV and movies. That maybe there's some in their home. They have family members that have them. Maybe they have a a family member who works in law enforcement or security and, and a gun is part of their job, so they're very familiar with them. Um, some play therapists don't like to use guns because of the violent violence and connotation that's, that's um, connected to it. Um, I think it, children can test limits with this and in the play setting, they need to test limits to know what's safe, what's allowed, what's not. So um, we can certainly use guns as a way to what, let them uh, experience it, uh, try it out, and then we set a limit around that. We could do a whole other video presentation on limit setting, especially with things like guns and other weapons. So I like this one. It's easy for little kids. It's foam. All you have to do is squeeze it, and the dart will just go flying right off. It's easy for them to manipulate. More real life toys. Remember, this is for preschoolers, so these are some little easy for them to manipulate cars. Here's a little ambulance. Here's a school bus, police car, and a fire truck. And once again, I've got them in that little um, school box because it's easy for me to see them and they it's easy to stack in this container. Here's some miscellaneous items, a mask, a nondescript mask is usually the best thing Then they could be, um, oh, they could be a superhero, they could be the bad guy if they're playing things like cops and robbers. I know preschoolers will do that a lot. I have two old cell phones, really, really old flippy cell phones, and kids don't even know what these are anymore. Or they'll say, are those like a walkie-talkie? And so we'll pretend that they're like walkie-talkies. So they like these because they can actually push the buttons on them. So you need two so that you can have a conversation with them because chances are they're going to want to call you. A Gumby and his friend Pokey, kind of nondescript, can be whoever you want it to be. They're bendable so children can um, manipulate them in different ways. I have a little bag of some play money, some laminated paper bills, and then some gold coins. 
real life. Um, it's also one of those things that children know whoever has the most money has the most power. And children often are in therapy because their world is chaotic and there's a lot of things in their world that they have no power and control over. So we want them to have opportunities in the playroom where they can have appropriate power and control. And if, they're, if they want to play store with you and they're the storekeeper and you're the shopper and you buy something and they say, um, that's forty twenty dollars and then you say how much of those do I give you and they say all of it because they know whoever has all of it has the most power. Um, even preschool children understand that about money. So Mardi Gras beads can be worn as jewelry. I've seen children lay it on the floor and make it like a little fence, put animals in it or even use it for a road for cars and some handcuffs. Metal ones are preferable over those um, dollar ones you can buy at the dollar store. They're plastic, they just won't hold up. You can find these sometimes in a toy store. Um, I've seen them sometimes even in a grocery store in the little aisle where they have a few children's toys. Often it's near like the cereal aisle and they always have little kitties. And um, children enjoy manipulating those handcuffs. Another little school box with some Sesame Street characters in it since this is a kit geared toward preschoolers. And a little duck family I found one day. You know, if you don't have a doll family, like this one, which is always ideal, an animal family will suffice. Children will use an animal family much like they would use uh, an actual doll family. So this one has two ducks of the same size and then maybe one little bitty duck. So you might have um, two parents and you might have a child duck. And then some little animals. These might be kind of small for preschoolers. You certainly want to make sure the, the, whatever age of children are that you're working with, that you don't have small things that they might put in their mouth and swallow. But these are some um, aggressive looking animals. There's also, um, you could have some more domestic looking animals, whatever you have room for in your kit. And then one more thing in here is another little school box container. It has some musical instruments. This is a little wooden xylophone. Doesn't make too much noise. A little um, triangle and then another little um, musical noise maker. Depending on the setting where you're doing play therapy, if you're going into a school, musical instruments might be too loud, depending on who's on the wall in the adjoining uh, room of where you're doing the play therapy, that might not be a really good idea to have that there. Anyway, this is just sort of a sampling of some creative expressive toys, like all these art supplies, some um, real life toys, and then some aggressive release toys, which by the way, sometimes toys will fit more than one category. Play-Doh is a creative expressive toy, but it could also be an aggressive release toy because you can pinch it, you can pound it, you could even stomp it onto the floor. Same thing with uh, craft sticks. You could make something with it, but if you were angry, it would be certainly be acceptable for a child to snap one of these in half. Or paper, you could even rip it. So things will certainly cross over and fit more than one category. So as you can see, I have a really diverse assortment of toys here and a lot actually, and it all fits in here, which is pretty amazing, I think. And you could certainly facilitate individual play therapy with this. You might even be able to facilitate a play therapy session um, with two children with this small number of items. Anyway, that's my portable play kit that's geared toward preschoolers. I hope it gave you some ideas for assembling your own kit. Remember with an older population, you're probably gonna have different toys or if you work with a specific population, like say children with autism, you may have more sensory, sensory related type items as well. So it's gonna be specific to the population that you work with, their presenting problems perhaps, their ages, that type of thing. If you want to learn more about putting a portable play kit together or about other aspects about play therapy, um, I'd be happy to try to answer those questions for you. You can reach me through my website, dfwplaytherapy.com.